Welcome back to part three regarding the process of gathering numerical data on the displays of a well-defined target behavior of concern. Behavioral recording. I'm Tom McIntyre, director of BehaviorAdvisor.com and in this segment of the video series we look at interval recording and time. Let's look first at interval recording in which we break the observation period into, oh, you guessed it, intervals or parts. We keep track of whether the target behavior, the one we defined in specific, observable, and measurable terms, whether the target behavior was displayed during each of the intervals. Let's say that you're going to observe a 50-minute class period and decide to divide those 50 minutes into 10 5-minute segments. You'll analyze the results to ascertain how the behavior under investigation is distributed throughout the 50 minutes. These results will be combined with the results of other observations to gain a clearer picture of how the behavior is distributed. Is there more of the behavior early on in the period, during the middle part, the end, or is it fairly evenly scattered? Depending on the characteristics of the action under investigation, we would select one of the two types of interval recording that's identified here. Let's look at how we would determine which one to use. With partial interval recording, we're going to determine was that behavior present at any point, at any time during that segment, that unit, that interval. You're going to have to identify a mark that you'll jot down when the behavior does present itself during that interval and devise another mark to utilize when the behavior is not displayed during that segment of time. If we're going to figure the percent of intervals during which the action was present at any point, we need to have an accurate mark for each of the intervals. For whole interval it's pretty much the same. We're going to have to have our yes mark and our no mark. But here we're writing down yes we're making our yes mark if the behavior was present for the whole, the entire interval. Or a no mark if the behavior maybe was present but then stopped. It wasn't present the whole time or it never did occur. Here's an example of a recording form with a check mark indicating that the identified behavior was displayed during an interval, and a slash mark through the circle indicating that the behavior did not meet the criteria during that interval. You can pause the podcast now to compute the percent of intervals in which the behavior was displayed. Interval recording goes beyond frequency or event recording that we covered in part two of this video series in that with frequency you know that it happened a certain number of times during your observation period. With interval recording you're able to determine if it happened more so earlier or later in the observation session. You obtain more defined, more refined results. Now consider this question. Why would you prefer one type of interval recording over the other? When would you select partial interval over whole interval? And vice versa. Partial interval is usually used for actions of shorter length. Hand raising, curse words, laughing, and so forth. These are behaviors that wouldn't last for the entire interval, the whole observation period, <laughs> nor would we want them to extend from the beginning to the end of the interval. Would we want a youngster's hand in the air for 10 minutes? 
whole interval recording is for longer lasting behaviors. Being on task, perhaps defined as engaged in the action that was directed. Being asleep, being in one seat. These are behaviors that could be displayed for the entire segment, the entire interval. We make a yes mark or a no mark. Of course, if we're talking about a student who displays the behavior rarely and for short periods of time, then we revert back to partial interval. For example, recording most kids in seat behavior for activities that require that behavior, it would be done with whole interval recording. However, for a youngster who has a high activity level, low self-restraint, and I guess a tolerant or incapable monitor to redirect that pupil, we may decide to record with partial intervals, indicating in which time segments the youngster sat down for, gee, even a little bit. The third type of recording procedure that we'll look in this particular video is momentary time sampling, or MTS. What we do is before our observation period, we decide at which points during the observation period we're going to observe that youngster in that exact moment and determine whether at that precise moment in time was that behavior happening, and we make our yes mark, or was it not happening, and we make a no mark. Then we compute the percent of moments instances when we looked over to assess the behavior. We compute the percent of moments that the behavior was displayed. In essence, it's a shortcut method that can replace duration recording that we covered in the second video in this series. If you must teach and record at the same time, using a stopwatch as in duration recording, to record the presence of an action can be really cumbersome, to say the least. Momentary time sampling allows us to estimate the percent of time that the behavior was occurring. And we found out from studies that the percent of moments that we find in momentary time sampling is essentially equivalent to the percent of time that a kid was engaged in the behavior during if we had done duration recording, if we had used a stopwatch. Yes, studies have shown that MTS and duration recording results are quite similar when both are conducted on the same behavior. So, in what percent of moments when you observe to witness whether that behavior was happening at that exact instant, not the second before, not the second after, at that exact instant, did it actually occur? Hmm, let's, you can pause the podcast and figure out the percent of moments. You'll see that seven of the 12 units have a mark indicating the behavior was occurring, was happening at that exact moment when a tone sounded to signal us to determine whether it was being displayed. Gee, that's about 58% of the time. No, I didn't figure that one out in my head. We could also monitor multiple students for the same defined long-lasting action at the 10 minute marks when a tone is sounded to signal us. We could also list rows under the names for each student and keep track of multiple behaviors for each youngster. Here's how those multiple behaviors would be shown for one student and as you might imagine, we could create a recording form that provides spaces for multiple students with multiple behaviors of concern. If we are unable to observe all behaviors at once, we may need to have different tones sound for each student or each behavior. Now or later, you decide you'll want to watch this video. You go to behavioradvisor.com, you go to the Academy tab, 
you look for you be the mentor and inside that area are some videos where you can watch a youngster engaged in a certain behavior and we can engage in some behavioral recording remember it's not important that what you call the behavior it's how you define it so you'll be going to the Josh video set a tone to sound every 10 seconds or have someone call out now every 10 seconds now recorders you should have a pencil and paper you have decided on your two marks you've got one for yes the behavior is happening right now or one for nope the behavior is not happening at that precise moment in time so here's the behavior to be observed we say he engages in a lot of palming behavior you say what is palming behavior you know what very good you know we should focus on the definition not what we call it so here is our observable and measurable precise definition of what was meant when someone said this youngster is engaged a lot in palming of objects it's when an object that has nothing to do with the lesson is touching the inside surface of the hand from the end of the fingernails down to that first crease under the palm of your of his hand okay. so if now is called when the camera is not showing Josh it's showing some other kid or it's showing the teacher don't make a mark okay because we weren't able to observe at this particular moment later on you are going to um, uh, figure out the percent of moments when you were able to observe that that behavior was happening so let's see here you've watched the video you took a look now if you're engaging this in this activity with another recorder you may have some variation in your numbers one of you says gee it was happening about 85 percent of the time another one says no no it was closer to 95 percent of the time well there are oftentimes variations in our observation uh, results this is called inter-observer reliability how close were the two were the were the uh, multiple observers in their estimation of the behaviors occurrence these observers then try to figure out well why did this variance occur how do we obtain findings that are more in line with each other so here are a few questions regarding what we've covered in our behavioral recording sessions thus far hmm you don't remember studying this material which types of recording would you use for on task behavior being the opposite of off task behavior we are defining on task behavior as engaged in the directed activity pause the video to think about this question start it again to hear the answers the answer well because on task is something we want to last a long time and typically does or if we're looking at off task that will last a long time we've selected duration or the shortcut procedure momentary time sampling you could also use either of the interval procedures partial or whole depending on the characteristics of that youngsters ability to maintain focus on the task although I suspect that whole interval is more aligned with the task we want the student to be engaged for the entire time oh non-compliance we ask you to record this youngsters non-compliance and probably the first thing you'd ask us is well how do you define that because there's so many different ways that kids could be non-compliant so we say okay given the characteristics of this youngsters actions typical actions we're going to define it as failure to engage in the directed action within five seconds of the direction being uttered after you have a chance to see the possible um, uh, uh, recording procedures that could be used pause the video to think about this question start it again to hear the answer 
you know, first off, we probably would have positively phrased a definition. I mean, if we're focusing on and we want to promote compliance and cooperation, then why aren't we looking at the behavior of engages in the directed action within five seconds, stating what we do want to see, the behavior we do want to promote. But here, frequency recording seems to be appropriate for this behavior, certainly a variation on it in which we'd want to make a mark whenever a direction is stated by the teacher, and then using our yes and no marks, indicate whether compliance had occurred. A variation on frequency recording. Ah yes, interval recording. Let's think back to interval recording. It notes whether the focus learner displayed the target behavior for all of the time if we're using whole interval recording or part of the time if we were using partial interval recording. So in interval recording, we look at the number of times that the action was witnessed and we divide it by the number of intervals. So here's your problem. Once a minute for the half hour that you're observing, you're making a mark whether that behavior was observed, yes, or was not, no. And you made your yes mark six times there. You, you made a yes mark at the third interval, during the third interval, for the seventh interval, the eighth, fourteenth, twenty-fourth, and twenty-eighth. What percent of the intervals was the behavior displayed? Pause the video to think about this question. Start it again to hear the answers. Let's see. Six of thirty observations the behavior was happening. 6 over 30. We reduce the fraction to 1 over 5, 1 fifth. That converts to 20 percent. I did figure out that one in my head. Here is your homework assignment. I'd like you to consider the different actions that are listed here, the labels that we give them. For each of these labels, define them in observable and measurable terms. Do take into account the circumstances, the setting, that particular youngster's way of displaying that behavior. You decide all those considerations. Be able to explain, then, your choice of behavioral recording procedures. Why did you select frequency or partial interval or whichever one you did select? Postal mail your answers to me on a $100 bill, enclosing two tickets to the theater in that envelope, and I look forward to seeing you. And another podcast here on Behavioradvisor.com. I'm Tom McIntyre, Dr. Mac, signing off.